Hey everyone, this is Nick DiRobertis teaching you financial modeling. Today we're going to be taking a look at some more types of financial models that we did not cover in the uh, financial modeling with Python and Excel course, but that we may look at in the advanced financial modeling with Python course. Um, and so the, the point of this video is not to list every possible financial model but instead to look at what some of the most common models are and just briefly discuss them. So um, the first model that we're looking at here is uh, portfolio models. It's a general class of models, portfolio valuation, portfolio optimization. So these are all about putting together uh, a portfolio of different assets and determining the risk and return on that portfolio. Um, and oftentimes you want to choose how to allocate the assets such that you will maximize the amount of return that you're getting for the amount of risk that you're taking on. Um, then we have additional funds needed models. So this is about trying to forecast about uh, how much money, how much capital the company is going to need to raise in order to uh, satisfy operations in the next period. So um, we actually already in the um, original course covered a lot of what we need here uh, because in order to do the, the DCF model, we had to learn how to work with the financial statements and forecast the financial statements and that's exactly what you're doing here as well. You're going to forecast the financial statements, and then you are determining, uh, based upon that, how much cash you're going to need to raise uh, through either debt or equity. So uh, not too much of an extension beyond what we've already done there, but it is a common class of models. Uh, then there are leaser own models where you're evaluating some asset and the rental rate on that asset and how much it costs to purchase it and trying to make a, a decision about that. Um, we have event studies um, are looking at something that occurs at some point in time and then trying to understand what changed because of that event. So it's kind of looking through historical data in order to look for a pattern that was caused by the event. Uh, we have M&A, merger and acquisition models. So this is uh, looking at one company, evaluating purchasing another company, and how that is going to affect the financials uh, of the combined company. And so it's basically Again, the DCF model um, got us a lot of the way towards building this out. Um, it's basically um, you take the the parent company and the the company that's being purchased, and you kind of combine their financials together and do a DCF on the combined financials, um, and that allows you to determine the value of the combined company. And you compare that to the value of the parent company. Um, and that difference there is going to be the value of the company that's going to be acquired to the acquirer. Um, and so that can um, help in setting the price in an M&A transaction. Then we have LBO, leverage buyout models. Um, so this is a particular type of M&A model, which is focused on uh, taking out a, a large amount of debt and using that to purchase the firm. So again, the, the M&A model is a DCF model with a little bit um, extra added to it. The LBO is an M&A model with a little bit extra added to it as well. Um, and so it's basically just modeling the debt side of this model in a lot more detail, saying that, you know, you're going to have different tranches of debt 
with different seniority and what are going to be the costs of each of those um, and uh, using that to evaluate the, again, purchase price of the targeted firm um, and ensuring that you're going to be able to pay back the debt and, and all of that. Um, and there are lots of models around valuing derivatives. Um, you know, options, swaps, forwards, uh, any kind of derivative. Um, forward and future models tend to be quite simple. Um, swaps are not that complicated. Options are where things tend to get fairly complicated in the models with, with quite a bit of math going on. Um, but if you're interested in, in going into derivatives, it definitely makes sense to check these out. Um, debt models, we did cover, um, you know, evaluating a loan, uh, from the perspective of a lender, um, in the, in the first course, but there are a lot of debt models that we didn't cover. Um, so one example here is immunization models, which, uh, are about saving, uh, about uh, having the right amount of cash at the right time in the future, uh, such that you're going to invest, um, in low enough risk securities in order to meet that objective. Uh, but you want to try to maximize your return <clears throat> while still ensuring that you're going to meet that objective. Um, term structure models try to explain uh, the yields on different maturities of uh, bonds. And um, default adjusted return models uh, are for evaluating the returns on um, debt instruments once you consider the default as well. So <clears throat> the, the model that we looked at in the course is, uh, you know, sort of in this regard of, of trying to adjust for the default in uh, the value of debt. And then um, value at risk is another um, type of, uh, yeah, I guess we can call it a model. It's, you know, I don't know if it's much more than a calculation, but um, it's trying to quantify what's the uh, maximum that you're going to lose with a certain probability. Like I'm 95% confident I'm not going to lose more than $1,000 in one day are the kind of statements that you can make with the VAR analysis. Um, we did actually look at um, Monte Carlo simulation and within Monte Carlo simulation, we looked at evaluating the, the different quantiles of the distribution of the outcome. And that actually will achieve this same value at risk uh, concept. Uh, but there are also ways to go about that without doing a Monte Carlo simulation in certain contexts, such as portfolio settings. Um, and again, that's not a comprehensive list of financial models. That's just kind of the most main ones that you see commonly out there that we didn't cover in the first course. Um, and so, I'm giving some links here in the slides, so definitely download the slides from the course website to look at um, these resources. And we have a few here um, that are Excel-based resources. Um, so right now, as far as free financial modeling resources out there, the vast majority are focused on Excel. Um, so it can be useful just to get an idea about the models and learn about you know, the, the finance side of things that goes into the model. And then you can try to go and recreate it in Python if you're interested in that. Um, or wait for when I'll be releasing videos on doing some of these things in Python. Um, I also found a couple free Python financial modeling related resources. Um, so what I've seen in these is that they don't tend to have very good coding standards um, that the authors of these courses uh, certainly know what they're doing. They certainly have good finance experience, but they're maybe uh, you know not as advanced working with Python, and so don't follow as as good of coding conventions 
as we do in this course. So that's a quick overview of some of the main types of financial models that um, we didn't cover in the first course, but I hope to cover in the advanced course. Um, and some resources for you to go out and learn these things on your own as well. So thanks for listening and see you next time.